Starting something of your own is just one of the most rewarding things that you can do with your life. The idea of creating something out of nothing, I think is something that's really unique to humans and something that makes life really, really rich. But taking the first steps to starting a startup is tough. Whether your dream is just to earn a bit of extra income online through selling your services or founding the next great tech company or even just creating really great content. Getting from zero to one is often the stage where people fail. They never take the first steps to make their dream a reality. Hey guys, my name is Tom and over the years I've started a number of companies from a tech startup to a hardware company and of course to this uh, small but hopefully growing YouTube channel. Whenever I set out on a new project, there's always three tools that I use without fail that I know are going to really help me to build momentum. I call these three tools the holy trinity and they're just so flexible that I can pretty much guarantee you that whatever project or startup you're thinking of kicking off, using these three tools is really going to add a ton of value. I release weekly videos on tools and tips that can help you become more productive, so if that's something you're interested in, press subscribe to be notified when I release my weekly videos. So in this video, we're going to be working through the three tools of the Holy Trinity. First, we're going to be looking at the creative juice. This is the tool that's really going to help you get those creative juices flowing when you're at the start of a project. Then we're going to be talking about the communication hub. This is the tool I use to keep in touch with my team, to bounce ideas off each other, and to keep some momentum going with any project that we're working on. And finally, we're going to be talking through the growth engine. This is going to be the sort of structural tool that really helps you to monitor tasks, to progress through with your project and to document everything that you need to make your business a success. All of these tools are completely free for the basic plan, which is going to be absolutely fine when you're starting out. So let's get into it. When you're starting out, you're going to have a million ideas and a ton of energy. And you want a tool that's really going to facilitate that. You want to get down these sort of rough brainstorms. You want a way that you can collaborate with your team in real time. And just a way that you can really visually see all of the ideas that are in your head. And that's what I use Whimsical for. This is my creative juice. The concept of Whimsical is very simple, it's a virtual whiteboard, but it's been executed in my opinion pretty flawlessly by their small team and it's just an absolute joy to use. Whether you're planning out a strategy for YouTube videos, whether you've got an idea of wireframes for software products that you might want to launch, Whimsical is going to make the process of taking an idea and putting it into something a bit more concrete really, really simple. When working in Whimsical, you can swap between four different modes. You have flowcharts, wireframes, sticky notes, and mind maps. And each of these has their own place in any process to get a project going. Flowcharts are nearly always the way that I kick off any project. And they're really helpful in mapping out what problem or what pain point you're trying to solve. Maybe you're creating a software product and you want to map out the user journey. I always start by doing this on Whimsical. I'll just map out the basic flow of how a customer goes around solving a problem and then try and identify different ways that maybe our software could help solving that. Equally, if you're starting something like a YouTube channel or a blog, Flowcharts are just a really great way to think about how you're going to distribute different content. For example, with my YouTube channel, I have four different content blocks. I have the How I've Learned series, the Mental Models, the Tools, and also the Book Club. And Whimsical just made it really easy for me to separate this content into the different blocks and then think how I'm going to promote that in different ways. Flowcharts are just really great for this high level strategic thinking before you get all of the little sort of nitty gritty details into place. And that's why regardless of the projects I'm working on, I'm nearly always going to begin with a very simple flowchart. Wireframes are perfect when you want to go into a bit more detail about the product or service that you might be offering. Whether that's a software product, you don't have to have any design knowledge, you can easily mock up a quick user journey, or whether it's a physical product and you just want to do some rough sketches about what it might look like. Whimsical wireframes are incredibly easy to use and I always turn to them at the next stage of detail after I've done the flowcharts. Mind maps are the third kind of mode that you can work in on Whimsical and I find these really valuable when I'm actually working with somebody else. So what I'll often do is set up a mind map with a colleague of mine or someone that I'm looking to start a business with and then we'll just pick an interesting problem and just start sort of working together through a mind map going down different rabbit holes, seeing where we come out. For example, maybe you want to launch a delivery box service, but you're not entirely sure what you're going to include in the delivery box. 
start a wireframe, you know, start writing random ideas of anything that you, you might want to include and it'll be really interesting to see where this whole process takes you. Finally, we have sticky notes. Now this is moving a bit away from that really creative initial stage into something a bit more structured. So you might want to capture here something like requirements for a product, you know, acceptance criteria, different features that you might want to make, different tasks that might need to be completed by the team. There's actually another tool which we're going to discuss towards the end of this video, which I prefer to use for this sort of planning, but if you sort of like the idea of a whiteboard and mapping out tasks using Whimsical, then absolutely you can use the sticky notes feature to do that. When you're starting out on a project, I think it's often tempting to just sort of single-mindedly pursue it on your own and you know, this can be uh, helpful in some situations, but I think for a sustainable business or project, you really need more than one person working on it. It's going to make the whole process so much more fun, so much more productive, and ultimately you're going to end up creating something a lot better than if you just worked on your own. And that's where Slack comes in. Slack is just hands down the best way to communicate with your small team. It, whether you're wanting to share files or share links to things or just generally bounce ideas off each other, it's just so much quicker and more efficient than using other methods. Like, God forbid, if you're still using Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp, you're going to have a really tough time. So I'd recommend at the start of any project, set up a quick Slack channel. It doesn't cost anything and it's going to make you a lot more productive. One of the first things I'll do when setting up Slack is just create a few channels for the different areas of the project. It might be that the whole team is in all of these different areas, but I just find that having a bit of structure in keeping stuff discreet, so you've got marketing ideas in one place, you've got product details in another. I just think having a few discreet channels is a really great way to just keep things organized. The next thing that I'm gonna to look to do is integrate different tools that I'm using into Slack. And Slack makes it really easy to add things like Jira or Notion into Slack directly. So when updates happen, you're gonna be notified of them real time. So what I'll often do is if I'm using a Kanban board on Notion, which we're gonna to get to later, I'll set it up so that when updates happen in that board, it also then gets sent to Slack. And this just keeps the momentum going. It lets people know what everyone's working on. People can comment on the tasks and it's just a really great feature that just gives you a little bit more productivity. So that's all there is to it really, just set it up and start talking to each other. The biggest downside to Slack is that it's not very robust, so you're often going to find that things get lost in channels and it's really not a great place to follow up or to really capture relevant information. And that's where our next tool comes in, which is Notion, or as I like to call it, the growth engine. If you're in any way serious about making your startup or project work, my one piece of advice would be you need to every week just make some sort of progress towards a goal. I think stagnation of any kind for any startup enterprise is just absolute death. You need to get some sort of rhythm where every week people are being held accountable to different tasks and those tasks are being delivered. And the best way, in my opinion, to do this is to set up a really simple Kanban board on Notion. So how I'll do this is I'll just have three or four different columns, which is you know, next up, to do, in progress and done. And then I'll hold a weekly meeting with whatever team I'm working on and we'll agree for the next week what are the tasks that each of us individually are gonna be responsible for. Then we'll easily be able to visualize all the work that needs to be done and throughout the week, we're gonna move the tasks through. Then once that week is complete, we'll then review these tasks see if things weren't delivered, why they weren't delivered, get to the root cause of it, and then start the whole process again the next week. And this continuous stream of tasks being done week after week after week, over a long time, is just gonna make such a massive difference to you progressing with your idea. Notion also has a whole load of other templates which are going to make your life a lot easier, whether you're working on a physical product, a digital one, or even just a service. I particularly like the design system, and regardless of the product that I'm working on, I'm always going to implement one of these. It saves a lot of hassle further down the line. What I'll usually like to do is just agree on you know, the logos, the colour scheme, the typography, and then having that set early and just keeping it consistent throughout the project is going to save you a lot of hassle and also a lot of back and forth information. I've worked for companies before, like pretty established companies actually, where honestly so much information is lost with people asking for the right logo, um, you know, the right vector image, all these different things. 
having them all installed in one place on Notion and accessing them easily, it's going to save you a lot of time. Now really the possibilities with this tool are pretty endless. Uh, I use it for capturing financial information, keeping track of sales leads, keeping track of a go-to-market plan, Instagram strategy, all these different type of things. Like trust me, if you just type into YouTube what you want to do on Notion and just follow it with Notion Guide, you're going to find something that's going to be useful. And if you don't, um, let me know because I'll probably be able to make you a video on it. So there you are, three tools which are hopefully going to help you on your way to startup success. From Whimsical, the creative juice to really just get the juices flowing and get the ideas out there and start getting some traction towards your idea to Slack, which is the communication hub, so you can really easily share things between you and your team and completely eliminate the friction of communicating. And finally, Notion, the growth engine. This is really where you're gonna be tracking all of the work that needs to be done, documenting everything. It's gonna be your database. You're gonna be living in it, trust me. Um, it's a really, really great tool. If there's any tools that you particularly enjoy using, um, I'd love to hear about them in the comments, so let me know. And if you like this video, give it a like, press subscribe, and I'll also leave a playlist here to a list of my Notion guides. I'm probably also gonna start in the future doing guides for Whimsical as well, because I think that there's not many creators out there um, making videos for this tool, and it's just, it's such a powerful tool. So yeah, thanks a lot, and enjoy the rest of your day.